Hello everyone. So today in this video I wanted to talk about knitting single motifs on the Brother 970 electronic. Now this is the design I'm going to be using. It's a bunny rabbit and uh, you can see this is taken from a punch card, a 24 stitch punch card. Um, now because the 970 is an electronic machine we don't need to put in the entire punch card, only the pattern that we want or the repeat. So you can see that this pattern here is 12 stitches wide. You can see up to here, that's where the pattern finishes. And then if you look there, it starts again. So I know that this pattern is 12 stitches wide and it is 31 rows long. Now you need to know how big the motif is, how many stitches wide and how many rows long it is, because that'll become important when you're positioning the motif on the garment. So before we go to the knitting machine, we need to do some maths and crunch some numbers so we know where to position the motif or motifs on the needle bed. So my garment piece I'm going to put the motif on is a sleeve and it's a very simple sleeve. It's just a rectangle like this and it's got a long hem on the bottom. And this is where I'm going to have my motifs on the hem. So my sleeve is 120 stitches wide, okay? So obviously there'll be 60 on this side of zero and 60 on this side of zero. And I'll just draw a line down the middle there so you can, not quite in the middle, is it? But there's a zero there. Right, so 60 there, 60 there. And I'm going to have um, three repeats of the bunny rabbit on the left side of zero and three repeats of the bunny rabbit on the right side of zero. And what we need to do in order to get the needle positions, we need to first, if you're having it symmetrically like I am, is work out the, the distance between the two motifs and the distance between the edge of the motif and the end stitches. So what we need to do first of all is figure out how, um, how wide these motifs are going to be. So one motif is 12 stitches, okay? times that by three equals 36 stitches. And then um, we're going to have two motifs, so 36 stitches times 36 stitches equals 72. Okay, so there's 72 stitches of patterning area. So what we need to do is subtract that 72 for the two motifs from the total stitch count. So 120 stitches for the sleeve, take away 72 stitches is 48. Okay, so that makes that pretty simple realistically because the big gap in the center can be 24 and then there can be 12 stitches on either end. However, because I'm pretty anal, depending on how, how much of a perfectionist you are, um, you can see on my design, I've just drawn out here the repeat, just underlined it. You can see that the first stitch all the way up the, the design is plain, okay? So if I put the uh, needle positions based on this, with 12 stitches on this end, 12 on that end, and 24 here, the stitch, the motif set on the right of zero would be thrown off by one stitch because of the, you know, the extra stitch there, which basically just separates the bunnies when it repeats horizontally. Now it doesn't matter on this side because you can see where the motif finishes here, It's that is the edge of the pattern. So that will finish on um, on needle twenty uh, needle uh, eleven, so then there'll be twelve stitches from the edge of the motif to the center. Well, that won't be the case here because it'll start with an extra. So it'll look like you've got another plain stitch. So it'll look like you've got thirteen stitches here, um, which might like make it look um, a bit odd. But um, anyway. What we're going to do is figure out the needle position. So I'm going to leave this side the same and put it exactly as that. 
And basically all I'm going to do with this is move it to the left by one needle when I position it. So we need to find out the needle positions for the, uh, the pattern based off this, these calculations. So we've got 60 here and we want 12 on the end. So 60 minus 12 equals 48. So my first needle position on left has to be uh, uh, left 48, okay? And then it'll knit the 36 stitches all the way over and it will finish knitting the repeat on left 13. So between left 48 and left 13 is 36 stitches, leaving 12 between the edge of the motif and the centre zero. Okay, so that's the left side dealt with, that's fine. And because of that extra stitch I said that needs to be factored in for me, what I'm going to do is, instead of having exactly the same but with the right of zero, um, is we're having 20, instead of having 24 in the middle, it will still be 24, but to the machine it'll look like 23. So what we're going to do is first needle position on right, okay, equals, and I don't know if I mentioned this, but it always knits, the, the machine always knits the motifs from the left edge of the pattern outwards. So you always need to put the first needle position as the left edge of the pattern. So it would start knitting from here. So instead of putting right 12 as the first needle position, I'm going to, sorry, right 11, I'm going to move it over to right 12, okay? So my first needle position will be right 12. And it will knit all the way over to right 47. So from 12 on the right to, 12, to 47 on the right, again, is 36 stitches, leaving 13 stitches on the end. So we'll have 12, 24, and 13. Well, it technically would be 23, but it'll look like 24 because of the extra stitch incorporated into the pattern. So yeah, 12, 23, and 13, plus the 36 um, motifs. So that's all centered perfectly. So although this looks very complicated, when you actually come to put the needle positions into the machine, it'll ask you what the pattern number is. And my pattern number for the teddy bears is uh, 925, okay? So the, it'll ask you for the first motif, first motif, what pattern number it is, you put 925. Then it'll ask you what needle position you want. You can select either the left or the right. It doesn't matter whether you start with the right or left motif, just as long as you put the right numbers in. So I would start with the left for me, I suppose, because you read a book, don't you, from left to right. So I would put left needle position as 48, press enter, and then it'll ask you if you want a second motif. So you press enter, ask you for the pattern number again, 925, and then you put the information for the right, which would be right 12, and then enter. Um, and that's it basically and it'll come up when you've done that if you want to put another one in or if you want to press end so you can press enter for end and that is basically the programming procedure which I'll show you in a minute um, but that is the stitch um, positioning worked out um, it would have been a lot simpler had I not wanted to move the needle position over slightly but uh, hopefully you get the idea and obviously it'll be different for uh, for your sweater or whatever but I just thought I'd show you just as an example now before we go over to the knitting machine to enter the information we've gathered we still need to work out the rows um, the positioning of the motif vertically on the garment so in my case as I said I'm going to have the rabbits on this long hem at the bottom of the sleeve 
Now the total number of rows for this hem is 100 rows, okay? So that means there's 50 on the front and 50 on the back. And of course, only the, the front side is going to have the motifs. So my rabbit design here, or bunnies, whatever you want to call them, is 31 rows long. So 50 minus 31 equals 19. So to center that, um, it's going to be one row short, really. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 10 rows here and nine rows at the end there. So that means that I need to knit, if I'm on this particular example, it's a hem. So I need to knit 60 rows to begin with for the back of the hem. Then do my 31 rows pattern. and then finish with nine rows plain with a being a total of 100 rows okay so when i get to row 59 i'm going to stop and i'm going to set the pattern up and um so i can knit the final row row 60 before the patterning starts I can knit the last row and select the needles for the motifs at the same time. So now I'm going to enter the information that I've just collected into the console of the 970. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm still here in my knitting room and you can see I've knitted to row 59. You remember I said that I wanted my patterning to begin on row 60. Um, I've knitted to 59 so that I can knit the last row, row 60, and select the needles at the same time. So I'm going to go back out of that, and I'm going to scroll to this icon here, with the arrow, the flower, and the garment front. Press enter. This is the positioning program, and we want the first icon here for pattern positioning, which is the arrow and the flower. Press enter. Select the carriage. In my case, I'm just using the main carriage. Press enter. Pattern range. Do you want an all over pattern or a single motif? I'm going to scroll across because I want the motif. And it's saying motif patterning. So it's saying one, it's flashing there. So it's asking us to put in the first motif. So press enter. What pattern number is it? Well, if you remember, it was 925. Enter. How many repeats of that pattern do you want, please? It's 12 stitches wide, and I want three repeats of it, equaling 36 stitches. Um, so I'm going to put three. I want three repeats. And it's giving us a suggestion here that it's going to centre it, actually, in this case, on left 18, that 36 wide motif. Um, if you wanted it in the middle, and that's fine. You can leave it as it is. But I don't, so I'm going to press cancel. And I am going to start with the left. It doesn't matter. I could start with the right or the left. It doesn't make any difference. But usually you read a book from left to right. So I'm going to start at the left. So if you remember, um, the left um, needle position was going to be 48. So I've got left highlighted and I'm going to enter um, 48 as the first needle position on the left. Press OK. And it gives us a little display of it there. Press enter. Now it's asking if you want a second motif. Well I do because I want the bunnies on the right side as well. So I'm going to scroll across to two and press enter. Again what pattern number is it? It was 925 but it doesn't have to be the same pattern number. You can, If you're doing different patterns you can use patterns from different pattern numbers if that makes sense. Um, again I want three repeats on the other one and this time I'm entering the information for the right so the first needle position on the right I need to scroll across and highlight right of zero um, is going to be right 12 the first needle position and you see this time it doesn't give you a suggestion actually that's because we've already entered information for the first one so anyway I digress so right 12 will be the first needle position for the second motif in my case. 
Press enter, it gives you a picture of it again, how it's going to look. Enter again, and if you want any more motifs, I think it allows up to nine or something like that. Um, but I only want two, so I can just leave the end highlighted and press enter, and it goes back to the main menu. If we go back to the knitting room, our row count is the same, and we're on row one of the pattern, and there's the pattern in the, in the display. So what you'll need to do to begin knitting a motif is you'll need some wrapping yarn. And what I mean by that is you need some a short length or long, depending on how long your um, motif is, of the main colour yarn. And uh, this is just four plies, so I would just use that as it is. But some people like to split the yarn so they've got a thinner length of it. So if you just untwist it slightly, then you can get a thin strand of the main colour. It'll take you a few minutes to separate them. But if you've got very thick yarn, you will want to do this. I won't bother doing any more, but basically, you'll end up with a thinner strand than I had before. Can't really tell that much with this four ply yarn, but uh, if you're using chunky or something, you will want to separate the, the plies basically. And this yarn is basically used to wrap against the edges of the motif. So when the yarn turns around and knits back, um, because obviously the yarn isn't being carried all the way to the end because it's just a isolated picture. Um, so when the yarn comes around and goes back it'll leave a hole or a ladder effect on the edge of the motif so wrapping with the main colour uh, fills in any gaps and then you'll want a couple of pegs or clips these ones are from a bond machine but um, you'll hold them down it'll basically hold your ends down for you that you're, you're wrapping yarn uh, so they don't get caught anywhere well my motif's going to be this brown um, colour. There's not much left on there, is there? So we'll have to see how that goes. Get rid of that tail out of the way. We've been doing a lot of knitting with this brown yarn and there's a lot of fluff everywhere, a lot of lint. So I need to clean this machine after I've finished this garment. Anyway, right, so I'm on row 59, I've got my pattern set up. I'm going to take the carriage outside the position centre um, and I'm going to turn the change knob to KC2 and that will be end needle, position, uh, end needle selection cancel so it won't select the end needles on KC2. We don't want end needle selecting for motifs because it will take the contrast yarn to the end and you'll have huge floats. In my case, I'd only have about that much, but still, I don't want that. So KC2 for motifs. So now the patterning belt is connected to the carriage and I'm going to knit this um, last row and this will also select the needles at the same time. I'll pull my slack down a bit. Now you can see it's picked out just a few needles. So now I'm going to put a clip on my contrast yarn and feed it into the B feeder. And my clip's just popped off there. I'm gonna pop that, I've got a ribber on here so I'm just gonna put it between the beds. Okay, got a clip on the end. I'm gonna push in the MC multicolor button. I'm going to knit one row across and I'll show you what happens. Okay, so you can see that the colour has been put in now on those selected needles and it's selected for the next row. And you can see the pattern is isolated. It's isolated exactly where I want it. So I've got my two strands of yarn here for either side of the motifs. Now, if this was only a small motif, you could actually just take one strand of main yarn and fold it in half 
and then once you've got the the strand of yarn in there you could separate the two out underneath the motif but as my motif starts over here on the left and then finishes way over on the right carrying this um, yarn all the way across these stitches would just be ridiculous so I've got two ends and I'm going to put a clip on the longest end like that so I've got the long tail of this main colour yarn here hanging down in my case over the river and what I'm going to do is I've just looped it over slightly here you see there's just a little bit of a tail what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the first needle that's not selected next to the last selected needle on the carriage side you only have to wrap on the carriage side each time I'm going to bring it forward slightly so the hook is exposed over the front of the needle bed and hook that yarn just into the hook so I want you to note here that the stitch that's on the needle is inside the hook and also the yarn I've just put over the needle is inside the hook so nothing is behind the latch I'm just going to push it back I'm just going to hold this for the first row here just so it doesn't um, come loose and I'm going to knit across and there is our yarn attached for this side I've zoomed in a bit on the right side here so you can see a bit closer at what I'm doing I've just put a clip on the end of the the long end of the piece of yarn that I'm going to use for the wrapping but my tail hanging down here and I've got the long end hanging over the river in my case if you haven't got a river on it'll just be hanging straight down so there's the the loop of yarn and I'm going to again bring the first needle next to the very last selected needle on the carriage side bring it forward just slightly so the stitch is still inside the hook and hook that that yarn onto that needle and then push it back you always want to make sure it's pushed back otherwise it will pattern in the other colour and we don't want that so I'm going to knit across and that's that yarn caught in so make sure you get your tail out the way so you don't start using that one and I've got my two long ends hanging down here every time the carriage the, um, each time on the carriage side should I say always bring out that first needle next to the very last selected needle and just wrap the yarn over the needle do a little e-wrap and push that needle back knit across and do the same on the carriage side on the other side first needle next to the last selected needle bring it forward slightly wrap it push it back of course as you knit the needle positions might change if the edge of the motif isn't straight um, but depending Depending on how far in it goes, you can still use the same piece of yarn, just float it across. Or strand, should I say. I'm going to have to keep my eye on that cone of yarn because I think it's going to run out before this motif is through. So I'll just knit a few more rows just so you can see the process of knitting the motif and then I'll show you it when it's finished.
So just coming up to the last row here, I'm just going to wrap that last needle there and knit the final row. And we're back at row one. So miraculously, there was enough, <laughs> barely enough contrast there. I'm going to take those clips off these um, colours here, remove the yarn from the carriage, the contrast yarn that is, and can clip it off. And I'm at row counter 91, just as I said I, um, when I did the planning. I need to knit another nine rows to finish this part of the um, sleeve that I'm making. I'm just going to turn the change knob back to NL, um, which means normal slash lace. And hopefully you can see this here, but this multicolour button should automatically cancel. As you can see. Um, if yours doesn't, make sure it is cancelled. I just need to knit these uh, nine plain rows and you can leave the needle selected because the carriage is, all patterning is cancelled, it'll just knit plain now. So there's row counter 100. I'm just going to take off the clips and my cast on comb here because I just want to show you something and you can see this is what we've got now ordinarily those floats would be far too long um, if this was on a garment um, one lady did actually say that um, for excessive widths of fabric in between motifs um, you can actually have two um, contrast cones or balls of yarn um, and have them threaded up with maybe having an additional tension mast. And when you get to about halfway in between here, swap out the contrast colour used for knitting this side and thread up with the other ball of yarn to knit the contrast on this side. It will mean you'll have to wrap on all four sides there, but it'll stop all this long floating, which I thought was an excellent idea. I never thought of that. But as this is going to be turned up now and made into a hem, it won't be an issue anyway. Before I do turn them up though, I do want to work these few ends in here, up the little wraps here where we wrap the stitches. A bit like in Tarsia, you end up with these little wrapped stitches here so that you can nice and easily hide the ends into those. You could do that when you finish the garment if this was just um, a motif on a sweater, but as I'm folding this up I want to deal with these ends now. So, I'll show you what the finished article looks like. So here is the finished sleeve that I've knitted these motifs on. You can see here's my hem, so I don't have any floats on the back. And we have our three repeats of the rabbits on this side and three on this side, with the centre stitches and the stitches on the edges equal, so that the, the rabbits are perfectly centred. So when this sleeve is folded and seamed together, we will have three rabbits on this side and three rabbits on this side and everything will look equal. There'll be 12 stitches there and 12 there. So um, there you go. That is motif knitting on the Brother KH970. So I need to thread my second colour into the... Where's all my clips gone? Have you ever found yourself losing bloody pegs and clips and stuff? I, I put things down on my knitting machine table and then it just disappears. I don't understand. Anyway, let's get on with this video. Make sure it's clicked in there. Making sure you don't let go of the end.